So, it's time for a somewhat depressing video. Um, because I've had enough an interactions along this line that I feel like it's a good time to sort of clear the air on this. Um, it, it's, it's, it's gonna be a personal one, I'll say that. Um, but I think it's something I need to do. Because too many people don't fucking understand it. So, those of you who have been following me for a while know that I'm diagnosed bipolar, among multiple other things. And uh, this bipolarism uh, has impacted my life pretty severely. Um, but when I tell people that it qualifies as a disability and, like, I could take a government check, a lot of people don't believe me. And, yeah, I could. I don't want to. You know, and I'll get into the reasons later. But, generally, um, I, I have strong issues with it when people who don't even try to understand attempt to armchair psychologize me and tell me that I'm fine or that I'm not bad enough for the pity party they want to be involved in. It's really fucking stupid. So I'm going to uh, detail some things in my life that happened as a result of my bipolarism. Let's start with when I was a kid. Um, and let's talk about the fact that I didn't know why but I would have extreme and violent mood swings um, during the middle of the day or over the course of multiple days. I would just fucking lose it. Um, suddenly I would feel not okay. Things would be terrible. I would get feelings of dread. I can remember crying because... I kept thinking that I was going to lose my mother somehow. I just, I felt this sense of impending dread, doom, and I couldn't shake it, and there were intrusive thoughts, and, and I just couldn't stop thinking about that. And so it made me cry uh, multiple times over the course of my childhood. I would just break down into tears because... There was something wrong, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And that's just when I couldn't put my finger on it. You know? There were a lot of times when there was something wrong, and I could demonstrate it. And because I'm, I'm bipolar, I would lash out. Sometimes violently. Um... It's been that way for as long as I can remember. This poor emotional regulation sort of translated into uh, night terrors every night. Ever since I was four. And the worst part is I got the senses in my dreams. So if it's a good dream, if I'm eating something nice, I'll taste it. But if it's a bad dream and I'm feeling something not so nice, I'll feel it. It'll feel as real as anything else. And, and so, not even going to sleep was a, uh, a, an escape. Um, and all of this would be, like, compounded by the fact that I had parents in a tumultuous relationship that ended early in my life. Um... And for good reasons, you know, I'm not saying I'm upset with my mother for doing it. But I am saying that, like, that added to it because I didn't have, like, somebody that I could go to in the house for guidance when I was feeling like shit. Um, and that happened a lot. There were a lot of times when, for a variety of reasons, 
I would be bullied in school. Um, and a lot of instances where <laughs> I fought back against the bullies and the school administration treated me like shit for it. Or shipped me home with a referral or a suspension or something so that my parents would have reasons to punish me for fighting back. So my moral compass was sort of damaged growing up because I didn't really have many stable authority figures you were supposed to be able to turn to uh, telling me, right, my mother tried really hard and she was also a breadwinner and she did awesome stuff, right? And my father, for what it's worth, after we got past this stuff that made me not want to live or be near him. Um, after we got past that stuff, uh, he was like trying pretty hard too. I didn't kind of see it then, especially since a bunch of stuff I'm not going to talk about right now. But basically, uh, we got shuffled around a lot. My sister and I, we got shuffled around and I hated where I lived. It was bad for my bipolar and also my ADHD and also my hypermetabolism because my metabolic rate is much higher than people of my age and sex. And with all of this in mind, <laughs> I was basically stuck with this bullshit psychology in the middle of nowhere. Like, people assume that I'm just some city kid who doesn't understand shit. I was raised rural. Super rural. Rural in the places where plants don't grow. At least not very useful ones. I grew up very poor. And I basically have never been above poverty. At least according to the U.S.'s metrics. I sometimes have to remind myself that... I'm very privileged to live where I do anyway, comparatively to other places, because I'm still the 1% right now of the world. Uh, let that sink in, by the way. Get some perspective if, if you haven't already. But the point is that, like, my whole life uh, growing up, I was like this. Um, my mother called it me being cranky and needing a nap or water or something. And to be fair, those did work. But here's the thing. Doctors didn't know that I was bipolar when I was a kid. And they never thought about it like that. They ran through so many diagnoses. And the only one that really stuck was ADHD with some allusions to PTSD as well from some stuff that I went through as a kid. And that meant they put me through the drug trials. I was on Wellbutrin, Ritalin, Adderall, whatever they could throw down my throat to try and get me to shut the fuck up and sit down. It didn't matter that I had harsh and or cruel teachers and peers and home environment and etc. and etc. None of that mattered. You know what mattered? I wasn't being the way they wanted me to. And, and this sort of developed into my, my nascent sort of fascist tendencies in high school. And I had to work hard to get away from those as an adult. But I, I basically lost a lot of control over my own self because I didn't even know I had bipolarism. I just thought everybody else was, you know, needlessly cruel, which to be fair, a decent amount of them were. I had hatred for the way things were. 
I always thought that I should be born in a different decade or a different town or something like that, and then maybe it would have all made sense. And to be fair, bipolar, ADHD, hypermetabolism, they're all real great traits for hunters and killers. Not real great traits for somebody who's supposed to knuckle under and go to school or work in a cubicle or some sort of service job or whatever. Like, if I could actually do what I was told, I would have been great in the military. Uh, I couldn't because my bipolarism kicked in whenever anybody said something that didn't make sense. This meant I didn't want to do well in school. I wanted to hurt school. I held myself back every single day from doing something I would regret. And I'm glad I did. But to be clear, my particular biological makeup is not suited to this society, to school, etc. At least not if I want to have morals. So, I grew up constantly fighting people and constantly fighting myself and every day just getting more and more fucking drained and, and, and for most of my adult life until I started to see a therapist because it was mandated to deal with certain things in my life that I'm also not going to talk about when I went to this therapist and described my shit in, in, in ways that, like, wouldn't get me locked in an insane asylum. Because, believe me, it ain't calm in here. When I started to describe these things, over many sessions, I thought, this is going nowhere. Then she goes out of the room one day and, and leaves my chart on the table. And... I kind of just read over what she said. And she said bipolar on the chart. She hadn't brought that up to me. It was actually kind of angering, like she was keeping it back from me. Um, so that she could keep getting a paycheck off of it. It, it, it was not something I wanted to, to read because, you know, it kind of made sense. Like I was raised in a relatively medical household, and I knew about bipolarism. It used to be called manic depression, you know? Um, and it made total sense. Bursts of mania with troughs of depression. Um, but this has meant throughout my life that it's been hard for me to either gain or keep employment. Mostly because the longest running mainstream job I had before I was an agorist, you know, anarchist content creator, before I wrote for agoristnexus.com, feel free to check that out, and before I, you know, started to get donations, thank you so much to the most recent massive donor and to my, mo like, longest term supporters, um, and to all the people who've helped me get here, because the whole the whole thing has let me live to this point without getting a government check um i i like i had so many negative moments in my life so much hostility so much that i didn't understand because i didn't know what i was because the doctors were not very good at their jobs. And because they didn't give me the proper treatments. Because they were basically throwing whatever darts they could at the dartboard that, like, the big pharma fucks gave them. Um, and the more I thought about it, and the more I embraced it, and the more I let it become something I could use rather than something that used me, the better a worker I became at my job, which is anarchist content creation. 
You see, I needed targets growing up. I've always been a, a cynical, pessimistic Debbie Downer, you know? And I've always had this anger, this hostility, occasional homicidal and suicidal tendencies to the point where one day I was in my mother's bathtub with a knife considering uh, committing. Because my life wasn't in my control. But the more I, I realized that this is something I can use, the more I've been able to use it. I now know that when I'm about to experience a depressive trough, I need to write it out and get as much done as possible before it. That when I'm about to experience a manic spike, I need to avoid the shopping sprees and the mindless browsing and just get work done. Because a lot of other people, their bipolarism absolutely fucking consumes them. And they, they, they get into these spirals that mean that they can't do what they need to do to live. I never want to be there. But I have been there before. There have been huge chunks of my life where I wasted so much fucking time, effort, etc. Especially before my diagnosis. Because I wasn't diagnosed till I was like 25. 25 years of my life I've had a chemical imbalance that has fucked up my ability to live normally. And the doctors didn't care enough to look into it at all. The government didn't care enough to treat it as anything other than me being a problem child who needed fucking drugs. The school system shat on me constantly. My peers treated me like an outsider. Growing up was hell. And I took it out on people who didn't deserve it too. I'm not innocent. I'm not perfect. But if I had known I was bipolar then, it would have been a fuck ton easier to live. A lot less pain. A lot less disruption in my personal life. A lot more stability. Maybe a lot more friends. Maybe a lot better community. Maybe a better relationship with my family. But I didn't know I was bipolar. And I wasn't in the habit of self-diagnosing either. When I was told that I am, it made complete sense. And here's where we get to the sort of light at the end of the tunnel. Because I found coping mechanisms that helped me deal with it. So, I have all these issues, right? So I have a diet that's high in proteins and fats and low in carbs. Because if I get a carb spike, it'll exacerbate energetic deficits that are caused by the depressive phase of my manic depression, which is what they call bipolar. So, I try to avoid a lot of high-carb things. And high-carb for me is higher carb, or sorry, lower carb than it is for other people. Because I've got the hypermetabolism. So I can eat more, but I try not to. Because I'm still trying to be fit enough. And honestly, fat and protein give me longer-term fuel, and it's generally cheaper anyway. So... I subsist primarily off of eggs, bacon, and cheese. I'm, I'm a doctor's worst nightmare. I have a chili dog, uh, two chili dogs every Wednesday on Chili Dog Wednesday. You know, I have coping mechanisms, and one of those is routine. Establishing that so that I have constant things that I can rely on 
And if something dips, if I get an unexpected depressive phase, or if I get an unexpected manic phase, I can use that shit. Uh, I exercised for anywhere from 30 to 120 minutes a day. Um, the exercise keeps me better. But then, you know, I, I didn't do well in PE in school. And one of the reasons for that is because the school system is designed by torture artists. And they want you to suffer into place, basically. So they wake me up at an ungodly hour. I've got to wake up at 6 a.m. or 5 if I want to make sure to get everything done. And then uh, I have to go to this shit-ass prison environment, which I hate. Which I hate! And I still do. Um, even though I've graduated over a decade ago. I still have... I, I have a freight train of grudges. That's one of the, the, the superpowers bipolar gives me. I can hold a grudge against thousands of people for years. <laughs> um, and the school system did that. Uh, we were poor, so we lived largely on carbs. So I had a carb spike in the morning. Um... Only to trough later, right around breakfast, which would be more carbs in the school system. Um, and then before that, or well, after that, P.E. Right in the middle of the fucking day when I was already tired. Um, and then afterwards, I was still expected to do my fucking schoolwork. So I basically found out that uh, if I used all my energy then, I didn't have any to do the rest of it. So I would rather get good grades in the other classes and have my uh, PE coach, who was very bad at physical movement, to say the least, um, be mad at me for taking a long time because I'm conserving my fucking energy and because they didn't care about the symptoms. They didn't want to call me manic depressive. They didn't want to admit that I'm what would now be considered bipolar. Because that's for older people. We'll diagnose you when you're older. Apparently it's pretty common to not get diagnosed as a kid too, so fuck the pharmaceutical industry. Fuck the psychiatry and psychology industry for that one. Like, holy shit. I have experienced this shit my whole life. Uh, but now... Um, what I do is I take a brief nap in the middle of the day. I work from home so that I can work around my disability and take a brief nap in the middle of the day. And that gives me enough energy that I can do the rest of the day's stuff with as much intensity as I do. It doesn't matter whether I'm depressive or not. It just, that might just mean that I need a longer nap in the middle of the day. But it's generally, you know, 30 minutes um, at tops. So ultimately, um, I found ways to deal with the situation that let me deal with it. You know, I work from home. I do a job. Most people don't want to admit that what I do is work. They don't, they don't want to think about it that way, but they still rely on apps built by people who do computer work all day. They still rely on infrastructure from people doing computer work all day. Whether or not it's from home, it's irrelevant. It's still clacking and clicking, you know? Still banging away on these fucking primitive-ass slates that I still would prefer over Neuralink, by the way. Don't get me wrong. But just to be clear here, it fucks with me. Family and friends can tell when I'm in a manic phase or a depressive phase. When I told them that I'm bipolar, it clicked for them too. And they were like, oh, that makes sense. That what was fucking wrong with you. 
Because there's always been something fucking wrong with me. At least in this society. This society that wants you to knuckle under. Do what you're told. File the forms. Seek permission. I suck in this society. You know? It's definitely a disability in this society. Um, and I could receive a government check. But here's the thing. I've been on assistance before. I hate it. I would rather never do it again. I would rather live on my own power. Hell, you know, it's funny. Greta Thunberg gets to say by uh, gets to say autism is her superpower, you know. But I get the feeling that people cringe when I say bipolarism is my superpower because now that I've found out how to use it, now that I've found out basically all I need is targets, I'm real fucking good at finding and hitting targets. That's the reason I'm so okay with going off on so many people, even though my reputation gets worse and worse in most people's eyes, even though my views have dropped, even though my followers have dropped, even though all of that is true, I have this thing in my head that says, get angry and do something about it. So I do that, because when things are wrong, that's what I want to do. I want to do something about it. I don't just want to sit there. I don't just want to let life happen to me. I want to do something about it. And I use my energy to the best of my ability. Hell, I'm manic right now. You can probably tell. But it's exhausting when people who don't understand act like it's an easy life. When people who never fucking bothered to ask me treat me like I'm being dramatic or, or a bitch or something or they don't understand and they don't care because this isn't one of the disabilities that the TV tells you you should feel bad about. It doesn't matter that I, I get night terrors that wake me up with painful shots of adrenaline that just hurt. It doesn't matter that that disrupts the following day. That I have lower energy then, too. Lower energy than I even already wouldn't have sometimes during a depressive phase. It doesn't matter that when I'm triggered I get this tunnel vision and I don't want to stop doing the thing that makes it seem like I'm having an effect that I want to none of it matters because this isn't one of the things you're told to care about you can care about autism you can care about depression you can care about anxiety and care about PTSD. Hell, you can even care about ADHD, but most people, they don't give a fuck about bipolars. You know, when I told somebody the other day, um, one of my housemates, that somebody said bipolarism isn't a disability, he related to me the story of one of his friends who is bipolar and never learned to control it, so he bounces from hotel to hotel when he's not homeless. Many such cases! Not all of us get it figured out. Hell, I could probably still do better. I don't think I'm perfect. I don't think I've achieved my zenith yet. I hope to never find it. I hope to continue ascending. I hope to use this as my ability to never fucking give up when I don't need to. Because that's my superpower. I've got edgy levels of anger about so many fucking things. And I have found my targets. The police state, the military industrial complex, the intelligence, medical, indoctrination, prison, industrial complexes. 
and so much more that's such a fucking problem. And I've also found people who I <laughs> strongly detest in my own circles, which is why I have no problem speaking my mind. Because if I don't speak it, I will fucking explode. It will build up uncontrollably. And I will eventually be uncontrollably angry. So if I don't let it out, every chance I get, in some way, whether that be a workout, yelling online, going for a run or a walk, taking a nap, if I don't do something to get rid of it, I will be toxically eating myself up. So the system that told me to shut the fuck up, knuckle under, take it, stop being so non-conformist, that system was actively killing me. That's why I hate it. The person in question claimed I was ableist for even suggesting that it affected my life as strongly as I think it does. They claim it's not because they don't know my life. Because they never cared to ask. And I've been sort of sitting on this for a couple of days until I realized, you know, maybe this should be a vlog topic. Because maybe I haven't said enough about it. Maybe not enough bipolar people have said enough about it. Maybe we need to start speaking up. Because this society that wants us to shut the fuck up and take it when we're being shat on, when we're being destroyed, when the structure is fundamentally anathema to the spirit we are forced to deal with, maybe we should start speaking up. Why isn't there a bipolar awareness? Huh? I mean, maybe there's a day... Where's our week? Where's our month? Where's our massive campaigns on TV? Oh, you don't want to talk about that because you're fine talking about the stuff that keeps people low. You're not fine talking about constructive ways to deal with their energy. You want me to take the same pills that you have other people on that make a lot of the people I know who have bipolarism feel dumber, feel duller, feel like they have less life. I'm not going to get dumbed down. I am not going to let my spirit become numb. I am going to use the fire that has been burning me from the inside out on other people. People who deserve it. The mass murderers. The brutality enforcers. The spies. The aggressors. There's so many reasons to be angry... But somehow, when somebody like me comes along and says, I am, and I'm not sorry, I need to just take my pills, or maybe just conveniently go away. Stop talking about it. Or at least stop treating it as a serious thing. I'm not shutting up. Ever. And to all the people out there who want me to, like Silver the Hedgehog would say, it's no use. Because I am not ever going to be done until the day I die. My genes, my lineage, my history has basically cursed me with these feelings. And I can either run from them or I can confront them and use them and not let them use me. And that is my plan. So that is how bipolarism affects my life. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, etc., etc. I don't know. Fuck it. Smash the state.